Okay, we're going to go to the other side of the country now, where Dennis King is celebrating a decisive election victory on Prince Edward Island. King and the Progressive Conservatives cruised to a second term in this week's election, winning 22 of 27 seats. The Liberals took three seats and will form the official opposition. The Greens fell to third-party status with just two MLAs. And Premier Dennis King joins me now. Premier, uh, congratulations on your victory. Thank you very much, David. I appreciate that, and it's good to be back on with you. It's one of the strongest victories since the 1960s on Prince Edward Island. Um, but, you know, pretty low turnout by island standards, just 65.5% voter turnout. What, what do you think that is? Oh, it'll be hard to put your finger on it. I, I'm sure there'll be a lot of viewers tuned in across the country that might say 65% is a pretty good number overall. But uh, it is uh, historically on the lower end here in PEI. Uh, look, uh, probably a number of different things. I think uh, two of the main parties probably not having a full slate of candidates probably didn't help. Uh, also, that I think there's a bit of distaste and tiresome nature that people have with politics in general, maybe. I don't know. But uh, uh, I know we worked hard uh, as our party. Uh, we grew our vote to the second highest ever in our history. And uh, uh, I feel we did all we could on that end, but uh, I'm not sure there's a simple answer for, for that question. I, I know you put a particular focus on getting more women elected in your caucus, and there were 50 women who ran, I believe, in this election, a record. Only seven were elected of the 27 seats. Why do you think that is? Why do you think uh, only about 25 percent of the seats are, are held by women? Yeah, uh, that's another good question as well. I think that it was the highest number ever. Uh, we have elected six of the seven uh, as part of our PC party, which is the highest number we've ever elected. Uh, so, so that is a great thing. But, uh, uh, you know, I think there were a lot of very competitive districts. There were a number of districts where two or three uh, of the candidates were, were women, and that, that was uh, great. But, uh, you know, when you throw this to the people, uh, the people decide. And we always say the people are always right. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think the fact that we have uh, seven I is great. Uh, it's something we need to continue to build on. And I know I'm really excited to have six extremely capable women uh, in our PC caucus who will do a great job. And uh, I'm looking forward to get to work with them. So you have six, as you say, uh, women in your caucus, up from two, I believe, you had during the last composition of the legislature, both of whom were in your cabinet. Now, your whole cabinet got reelected, and we know that representation matters. Are you going to make room in your cabinet to increase the number of women from two? Yeah, I mean, we've added nine new members in general. Uh, so uh, obviously, when you have that, that adds to your strength. It adds to the options that you have to build a cabinet. So I will certainly uh, be committing to growing that number. Uh, but we have a lot of difficult decisions to make over the next number of days as to how we build a new cabinet. Uh, but uh, I'm very, very grateful that we have such wonderful talent and depth that we can add. Uh, so I hope our cabinet will have a mixture of experience, of new blood. Uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll have many more women in the, in, in the cabinet and also uh, try to balance geography across the province, which we're better able to do this time than we were last time. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. You've got about a 10-person cabinet, including you, right? Nine ministers and, and the premier. Will you do what Joe Biden has done and what Justin Trudeau has done and, and go 50-50 on that split? Or is that too far to commit right now? Well, I, I don't know, because, I mean, by legislation, we can go as high as 11 mm. uh, plus me. Uh, so we have to look at sort of what that could look like and how it could look like. But uh, I, I, you know, I would like to get as close as, as I can, you know, just depending on how the numbers break down. But uh, we have a lot of difficult decisions to make. We have, uh, uh, I think, one of the we fielded the strongest team ever for our party, for sure. And 22 of the 27 got elected. So uh Building cabinet is difficult at the best of times, and it's going to be really challenging this time. But uh, you'll certainly see, I would have to say, a record number of women in Prince Edward Island uh, politics will be in the cabinet this time. One of the, I guess, downsides of being reelected, like you were, is you don't get much of a honeymoon. And, and you, because you know, you are the premier, you don't need a transition period. And you've got challenges right away in your health care system, right? We've seen the news that for the next six, day, six days, patients at Prince County Hospital in Summerside won't have access to anesthesia services. So some trauma cases and other cases will be diverted to Charlottetown. Some surgeries will be postponed. So you pick right up really where you left off. What are you going to do on that front to deal with that health crisis? Yeah, it, look, it's the it's the topic we talked about most in the in the election campaign. Uh, it's what we've been focused on for four years, and 
as we go about rebuilding and reshaping the healthcare delivery services here in Prince Edward Island, uh, there are no shortage of the challenges, uh, some of which you just outlined there. Uh, you know, a lot of it is around health human resources. So uh, in the case that you referenced in Summerside, it's, it's an anesthesiologist. We need, we need two more individuals there. Uh, they are very difficult and challenging to recruit. It's a competitive field. Uh, so, we, you know, we will take another look at our recruitment strategies. And, and we had a number of, uh, uh, of policy platforms that we uh, unveiled during the campaign that we will put into practice. And, you know, but it has to be an all hands on deck approach, David, to try to, uh, you know, first of all, stabilize the healthcare delivery services and then go about changing it to meet the realities of today and tomorrow. But it's uh, something I deal with and every premier across the country is dealing with. And it's, uh, it's not an easy one. Well, the premier kind of right next door in Nova Scotia, Tim Houston, he's putting cash retention bonuses on the table to try to get people to stay in the system, to lure people back into the system. Does PEI need to follow the Nova Scotia example and start putting cash on the table uh, to try to, to, to fill those gaps that you have? Yeah, well, the jurisdictions like Newfoundland and Labrador and PEI, I mean, we uh, stepped up and did the retention bonuses as well for many of our healthcare care uh, providers and, and, and we'll continue to look at that. Uh, you know, we have to be careful as a small jurisdiction of getting into a race to the bottom with bigger jurisdictions who have much deeper pockets. So, uh, you know, there'll certainly be some limitations around what we can do, but I, I really do think it has to be all hands on deck and all options on the table to see what we can do. Uh, the people we have in the system now are critically important. We want them to stay here. We want them to be well paid and we want them to be happy. Uh, so they will stay here so we can go about recruiting more and help stabilize services. So I think everything's on the table and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we'll uh, we'll do everything that we can to keep everybody here. But it sure is a competitive, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, labor force out there. It's a competitive situation. And uh, uh, unfortunately, places like PEI have the shallowest pockets uh, when it comes to uh, paying big, 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 big bonuses. All right. Well, Premier King, congratulations again. And thanks again for joining us tonight. Appreciate it. Oh, thank you, David. I appreciate you making the time for us. So thank you.